Glenfiddich are fairly well known, especially in the supermarket aisle. But what happens when they get a bit experimental? Welcome back, Dram Fam, to the Whiskey Diary. About a month or so ago, I received this comment. And I thought, that's a good idea. I have a long history with Glenvillic in the sense that that was a whiskey that my dad used to drink. And as some of you know, my dad was the one that originally got me into whiskey back in the day. That's a whole separate video for another day. But they've always kind of held a special place in my heart, especially the Glenvillic. 12, which was kind of what I always saw as the premium whiskey. If I ever went into a pub and I saw that on offer, you know, I thought, this is a classy establishment. They've got the good stuff. As I've got older and as I've got more into whiskey, they're not really a brand that I explore that much. I think, or well, I found that generally I can kind of get more things that are more to my palate elsewhere. That's not to say that Glenfiddich don't make good whiskey. And so when I saw that they did an experimental series, it's always caught my eye, but I've never really been that attracted to it. That is until I saw that comment. Many of you know, I'm a huge fan of weird casks. I love a whiskey that's been in something different. I think that is a huge world of innovation there that can happen through interesting cask finishes. And for me, this sits very much in that pocket. This is the Glen Fiddick Orchard Experiment from their experimental series. This is a no age statement whiskey. It is distilled and bottled by the Glen Fiddick Distillery that of course makes it a Speyside. It is bottled at 43% ABV. I believe it is chill filtered. I believe it is artificially colored. It is absolutely unpeated. It comes in a 70 centiliter bottle and you can find this. I've seen it as low as about 35 pounds, but I think I paid about 40 for it. What makes this very interesting is that it was originally or initially aged in American Oak, which is a, I would assume is just a refill bourbon cask. It was then finished for around four months in a Somerset Pomona cask. So what exactly is Somerset Pomona? Well, fundamentally, it is apple cider brandy, which is made in this in this instance, it's made down in Somerset. It's an apple cider brandy, which is basically distilled cider. Whereas, you know, whiskey is, you could kind of say it's distilled beer. This is distilled apple spirit, um, which is then mixed with apple juice. Now, in order to get around, because I don't think SWA, I, well, I assume that the spirit and the juice are not aged together in a barrel. I believe that it's the spirit that's aged in a barrel is then mixed with juice and bottled at about 20%. So I would assume that then this is then racked into those casks. So it's fundamentally apple cider brandy casks. It's quite difficult to find the actual specifics on this because they kind of give you all the terms and what all the different things are, but it doesn't tell you exactly what's done in what order for both the whiskey and the Somerset Pomona. So that's my best guess anyway. So that's what I'm gonna run with. Not that it really matters too much for the benefit of this review. So this is part of the Glenfiddich Experimental Series. They produce a short range. I think there's four of them in total of things which are put in interesting casks. Fire and Cane is like a peated, unpeated um, vatting and it's aged in rum casks. And then there's Winter something or other which is put in Canadian wine casks, I don't know, uh, the, uh, and of course the IPA cask, which I'm sure a lot of you are quite familiar with. I would quite like to experiment with some of these and experience the range, but I just haven't got round to actually taste them. That's a lie. I tried the Fire and Cane. I actually really quite liked it. I was quite surprised at how nice that was. But anyway, today we are looking at the Orchard Experiment. So let's get down to tasting it. The nose initially is quite light, incredibly sweet, incredibly fruity. Surprisingly enough, orchard fruits. Who'd have thought it? Yeah, lots of like tons of apple floral. There's a biscuitiness kind of fudge, a bit of a dairy note. Still just incredibly sweet, but there's like an off note, like a an astringent funkiness, something that, which 
could be good or bad. I've had quite a few whiskies which have got like a weird funky thing going on, but I don't know. This sits a little bit differently for me. It sits kind of outside of the rest of the, the nose of the whiskey, but not a terrible nose. Onto the palate. Texture wise, quite heavy, um, quite watery. When I say heavy, I don't mean like thick and like overwhelming. I, I literally just mean kind of watery, which is, I mean, I guess the downside of being bottled at 43. Some may see that as quite an interesting texture. Um, to me, it just feels watery. Sweet, tons of apple, like just tons of apple. And to be honest, not really much else. It's got a bit of an effervescent feeling coming now but yeah it's it literally is just tons and tons of apple notes in varying degrees green apple red apple a little bit of an oakiness starting to come through now a little bit of that biscuitiness like digestive biscuits kind of sitting there but it really is just overwhelmed with sweetness finish wise it is sticking around like quite a lot definitely more apple notes straw and hay like that dried kind of uh summer like post um post harvest field kind of that smell I, i'm kind of getting on the finish but sticking around right at the back of there is like a a vegetal skin like fruit skin kind of it's, it's bitter like it's an it's an unpleasant bitter note if you've ever like eaten an apple and like bit into a seed, you get that real like snap of just like a wave of really strong bitter, like you shouldn't have eaten that kind of note. That's what I'm getting on the tail end of this. And it's not the worst. It's just kind of... Now you can go back in and it's, it's kind of manageable, but... Yeah, it doesn't feel, it just doesn't feel like it should be there. So, what do I think? I don't mind it. It's all right. When I was trying to see whether it was uh, chill filtered and natural color, obviously if it doesn't say it on the bottle, we can just assume it is, but I don't like to assume. I'd rather come armed with information to the best of my knowledge. I did see uh, quite a few people found a rather offensive note in here. Quite a few people described it as soapy. I can see where that comes from. It is, there is a bitterness and like a, it sits outside, like outside of the palate of the whiskey. You've, you can taste the whiskey there. It tastes like a nice fruity space side with a strong apple influence. That's good. Then there is this bitter note that kind of sits alongside it, which is not good. And it tastes like two completely different things. If this was 30 pounds, I'd probably say, uh, if you if, if if you've got 30 quid burning a hole in your pocket and you've been through everything else in the supermarket then yeah pick it up it's it's interesting to say the least um i'm sure lots of people would absolutely love it i'm sure there's plenty of people which would absolutely detest it i think if you're a real seasoned whiskey drinker you can put your 35 40 quid um elsewhere there's going to be other things you can get for that but if you're still exploring what it is you do and do not like this this could be for you, I guess. I mean, I mean, get subscribed. I've got some more videos coming up of where you can put kind of 30, 40 pounds for whiskey. But yeah, I mean, I think you can probably do better, to be honest. It's not the worst thing I've tasted, but it's not the best either. But anyway, that's enough from me. Thank you all very much for watching. If you've liked this video, please do click the like button down below and if you'd like to support the channel please do consider subscribing let me know down in the comments if you've got any whiskey that you'd like me to check out like i really liked this suggestion for me this was kind of cool to put myself out of my comfort zone it's not something i would pick so let me know in the comments and maybe i'll pick that for another review in future and on that note slanjava uh -oh.